life science students have multiple examinations to be dealt with we used to get a lot of questions in our forum asking the difference between csar net and ugc net here i am to help you out know the differences between csar net and ugc net so are you ready Let's start with a question what's the difference between UGC net and CSAR net So first I'm going to deal with UGC net NTA stands for National Testing Agency and UGC stands for University Grants Commission and net stands for National Eligibility Test First I'm going to deal with what is UGC UGC is University Grants Commission which is a governing body which controls the entire colleges and universities in India. The conducting body is going to be National Testing Agency. So this is the most popular one which actually conducts many important examinations like NEET and JEE. This UGC net is mainly concentrating on arts, humanities, as well as commerce so they conduct examination in almost 81 subjects and if we have to talk about nta csir net so csir net is another governing body which actually controls or governs the entire csir laboratory in our country where a lot of research are being carried out so again, we are going to talk about this NTA CSAR net in detail. This examination is mainly conducted for science stream. Very importantly, it is mainly for the science stream. We are going to talk about all these things in detail. Let's proceed on with the next question. What's the purpose of both these exams, whether it's going to be UGC net or CSAR net? Both these examinations are conducted to recruit candidates for the post of assistant professor in a college or a lecturer in a college or university in India or for JRF who want to pursue their PhD. We can say who want to pursue their PhD in any of the laboratories. It can be either of UGC or it can be either of CSAR. So I'm going to give you an overview of this one. Suppose if I'm going to differentiate between CSAR net and if I'm going to differentiate between UGC net. And these examinations are for both the cases. So if I'm going to talk about the CSAR net, it's mainly for science stream. It's mainly for science stream. Like we life science people used to write CSIR net life sciences. And UGC net is mainly for arts or we can say humanities and commerce and many other subjects we are going to deal with it. So here this examination is for two purposes which is going to be an assistant professor assistant professor in a college or university. So we used to mention it as LS lecturership. And if we have to talk about JRF, junior research fellow, if you clear this one, then you will be given a stipend of rupees 31,000 when you are doing your JRF for about two years. And later, if you become SRF, it will be 35,000 per month. And what about UGC net? In UGC net, the same case, but the funding body is going to be University Grant Commission. So they are also going to be assistant professors. They can also become assistant professor in UGC colleges and universities. And they can also become a JRF in the UGC governing body. So here also they are going to get the stipendship. Yes, I hope everybody understood this one. We are moving on to the next one. Who is going to be the conducting body? We know it's going to be NTA. So NTA is the conducting body who actually conducts examinations for both UGC as well as for CSIR net. The next question for us is who can apply for CSIR net or who can apply for UGC net? Yes. So we are going to talk about exam subjects. 
So if you're talking about UGC net, it mainly deals with arts, humanities or commerce. So there are going to be 81 subjects where this UGC examination will be conducted. But when you're talking about CSIR net, it mainly deals with science stream. It mainly deals with science stream. We can say it's going to have five subjects only. So only science students can apply for CSIR net life sciences, whereas arts, humanities or any other subjects, you can apply for UGC net. So it's going to be chemical sciences, people who are studying chemistry, people who are studying physics and people who are studying mathematics, people who are studying earth sciences and people who are studying life sciences, which we belong to this category. So if you want to ask me a question, ma'am, I'm belonging to life sciences. Can I apply for UGC net? Can I apply for CSIR net? Yes. You can apply for both CSIR net also. You can also apply for uh, UGC net also. How? You can apply for CSIR net life sciences. And there's another important uh, we can see over here is environmental science. People who are belonging to life sciences, you can apply for UGC net environmental sciences, not to any other subjects, but only to this category. There are 81 subjects listed over here. So those who want to make a note of it, you can literally see over here, there are 81 subjects where UGC conducts examination for these people. Okay. Next is going to be the exam pattern for CSIR net life sciences or we can say CSIR net in common. So there are going to be 145 questions out of that 145 questions you are going to deal only with 75 questions. Very important one. It's going to have only one paper. So I'm talking about CSIR net. So CSIR net is mainly going to have only one paper, only one paper, single paper. And the duration of this examination is going to be for three hours. And there is no break at all. You have to complete this examination within three hours. So let's talk about CSIR net exam pattern. So it comprises of three parts, which are going to be part A, part B and part C. Part A mainly talks about general aptitudes, which we can say mathematics. So totally you'll be having 20 questions. Out of 20 questions, you are going to deal with 15 questions. And for every correct answer, you are going to get two marks. So total marks are going to be 15 into two. So you'll be getting 30 marks in part A. If you're going to talk about part B and part C, part B and part C mainly comprises of your subjects, which can be chemical sciences or life sciences or earth sciences or mathematics, all these five subjects. So part B is going to have almost 50 questions out of 50 questions, you are going to deal only with 35 questions. And for every correct answer, you are going to get two marks. So totally it's going to be 35 into two, it's going to be 70 marks. When we talk about part C, so part C is going to have 75 questions. Out of 75 questions, you are going to deal only with 25 questions. And listen carefully, part C is going to have, marks are going to be four marks, not two marks. For every correct answer, you will have four marks. So it's going to be 25 into four. So totally it's going to be 100 marks. So total, if you count 30, 70 and 100, the total is going to be 200 marks. Okay, do I have any negative mark in part A or part B or part C? Yes, you have. If you talk about part A and part B, it's going to have 0.5 negative marks. But in part C, very important, it's going to have one mark, which is going to be negative. Very important. So the total marks for CSIR is going to be 200 marks irrespective of any subjects. Okay, so now we understood about CSIR net exam pattern. Now we are going to talk about UGC exam pattern or we can say UGC net exam pattern. And both CSIR net and UGC exams are going to be CBT or we can say online objective test. And this is very important because in CSIR, I told you there's going to be only one paper, but UGC has two papers, which is going to be paper one and it's going to have paper two. And paper one mainly relies on aptitude. 
and paper 2 is going to be the subject. UGC is going to conduct or we can say there are going to be 81 subjects. It can be any subjects that we have seen before including environmental science. And there is no negative marking in UGC net. I told you for CSIR net, you are going to have 0.5 negative in part A and part B and one mark negative in case of part C. But in UGC net, you are not going to have any kind of negative marking. Okay, yes. Okay, let's see this pattern. You can literally see over here. So first is going to be paper one, which is general aptitude we are talking in case of UGC net not CSIR net and the marks are going to be 100 okay let's see how many questions 50 questions it's going to have 50 questions for every correct answer you will be having two marks there's no negative marks so 50 into 2 you are going to get 100 marks in paper 1 and when we talk about paper 2 it can be any subjects 81 subjects we have talked about so it's going to have 100 questions and each of the 100 questions, if it's going to be correct, you are going to have 100 into 2. So you will be having 200 marks. So total, if you're going to talk about 200 and 100, it's going to be 300 marks. Previously, I told you for CSAR net, it's going to be 200 marks. Here, it's going to be 300 marks. And very important, it's going to be the duration, if you're going to talk about, it is for three hours same like CSIR net it is also going to be three hours do not get confused it's paper one and paper two so there's going to be a break no there's no breaks in between paper one and paper two okay marks relaxation so we already know if you want to apply for either CSIR net or UGC net you need to have a minimum marks in your master's degree or we can say in your bachelor's degree so if I have to talk about UGC net we already know of 81 subject and this is five subjects which mainly relies on science and the same goes for both the things general category or we can say or we can say EWS economically weaker section so 55 percentage of marks in your master's degree the same goes here also 55 percentage in your MSc or BS which is four years not three years it's not BSc and integrated BS or MS or BE or MBBS or B Pharma, yes. And you can see it over here, this is a relaxation in case of marks. We have talked in case of age limits, now we are talking in case of marks. Here, 5% relaxation, we can say, 5% relaxation is given, and here also it's going to be 5% relaxation, extra 5% relaxation is given over here. And when we talk about UGC net and CSIR net, so they are going to give a lot of career scopes, right? Yes, so I'm going to make a, a kind of flow charts to make you understand. So we know that there's going to be MHRD and under that they are going to be UGC. We know UGC is the one which actually controls all the colleges and all the universities and CSIR Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, they are the one which mainly deals with all the scientific or research laboratory, they control them. And they are also two categories, they are actually doing it. So both of them, the conducting agency are going to be, NTA is going to conduct both the exams. So they can either become assistant professor, assistant professor, or they can either become a JRF and they can pursue their PhD. So they can either pursue their PhD. Here also the same case, assistant professor and they can also become JRF. What's the main difference here? The funding agency is going to be UGC. Here the funding agency is going to be CSIR. That's the main difference. You should understand here it's 81 subjects. Even environmental science comes under this category. And this is only for science stream. This is only for science stream. Okay. Many used to have another doubt. So if I'm applying for JRF or or if I talk about assistant professor, how can I apply for it? Both the exams, there are two ways where you can apply for it. Suppose if I have to talk about JRF and then there's going to be net. Both the category, whether it's UGC or we can say it's going to be CSIR. So if you want to mark, there's a check-in box where you can actually mark. One is going to be JRF and net. 
another case is going to be only net or we can say this net is referring to ls so if you're going to apply through jrf and net if you have the cutoff for both the things then you can either choose jrf or net or you can choose only net so just choose wisely and then plan accordingly and then you can go for it very important thing csa and net and ugc net we are talking about listen very carefully there is a negative marking in csa or net i told you part a and part b is going to have 0.5 0.5 negative part c is going to have one mark negative but ugc net which is going to be of 81 subjects there is no negative mark important there is no negative mark when you're applying for this UGC net. As we already know, UGC conducts net exams for art stream, including environmental science. But CSAR does not conduct exams or we can say for art students. This is another important difference. Yes, very important differences we have seen. I'm going to conclude everything, summarize everything for your own understanding. We know that UGC net is in 81 subjects and CSAR net is for five subjects and who is going to conduct this examination I told you very popular agency which is going to be national testing agency so national testing agency is the one which conducts both the exams they conduct both the exams and when we are talking about UGC, I told you there's going to be 81 subjects. People who are belonging to any one of these 81 subjects, you can actually apply through UGC net. But in case of CSAR net, we know there's going to be five subjects. Chemical sciences, life sciences, physical sciences, mathematics, and earth sciences. Anybody who are belonging to this category, you can apply through CSAR net. How much is the duration of examination for both the cases? Both are going to be three hours. So UGC net is also for three hours and this is also for three hours and we saw there are going to be 300 marks in UGC net but in case of CSAR net it's going to be 200 marks important and listen I told you in UGC net you are going to have two papers which is going to be paper one and paper two paper one mainly deals with aptitude and paper two can be any of your subjects it can be any one of it and we know it's going to have 100 marks in paper one and 200 marks in paper two and when we are talking in case of CSAR net I told you there's going to be only one paper with three sections we know part A part B and part C this is the main difference between UGC net and CSAR net okay the next one is the very important differences between UGC net and CSAR net so this is very important no negative marking in case of UGC net we saw and there is 0.5 negative marks in case of part A and part B and there is one mark negative in case of part C yes okay and age limit for JRF to become a researcher or to become a PhD older so it's going to be 31 years I'm sorry it's going to be 31 years and here it's going to be 28 years and what's the age relaxation we already know it's going to be five years in case of these categories and three years we have already seen people who are doing law degree yes and the next comes CSIR here it's going to be five years relaxation for these people and three years relaxation for OBC and CL okay the final one we already know minimum criteria 5% relaxation 55 percentage marks for general and 50 percentage of for the other categories yes so we have come to the end of this lecture I hope everybody understood the difference between CSIR net and UGC net so don't say I wish instead say I will so thank you everybody for uh, spending your time over here thank you so much for joining if you really like our video please do like share and subscribe to our channel Biotechnica thank you all of you we'll meet in the next video